it going. And welcome to the place to be reviews. We are on location and a beautiful location is we are at the Copper Kettle Distilling Company in gorgeous Prudenville, Michigan. I'm here with the owner, propi proprietor, CEO, if you will, Mr. Chris Zada. Thank Pete. you for having me, Chris. Glad to have you, Pete. And uh, I've I've come down here a couple times uh, to uh, to enjoy these delicious uh, drinks. And this is a, a Moscow Mule that Chris made. And um, I'm going to take a sip on camera because I'm almost 40 years old, so you don't need to check my ID. Cheers. Cheers. But so tell the uh, we're in the place to be. We review. I, I mostly do movies, but I will basically do anything: comic books, restaurants. It's you know we. Just have fun with it, and um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Prudenville and uh, how long you've been doing the distilling. Well, uh, I started out making beer and wine uh, back when I was 20, uh, 21 years old, <laughs> uh, and it was a hobby of mine for almost 30 years, and then I started looking into the distilling side of it uh, about four, four or five years ago, Okay, and uh, got together with my brother and sister-in-law, Corey and Loretta my partners in the business okay. and we talked a little bit two weeks later we bought the building and spent 18 months rehabbing and going through the whole permitting process so yeah i was gonna say that was because this used to be uh it was what the oxyo gift shop for yes. as long as i can remember and i don't think it had been open in close to 20 years yeah the building was empty this, yeah that's yeah that's about when i graduated high school actually so yeah nine yeah so wow um so how was the permitting process? That's that's a pretty uh, arduous uh, journey to to go through, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. I, I've heard uh, that from just a lot of people. Very, just time consuming. Yeah. It, Red it's tape. not difficult. Mm -hmm. It just takes time. The average time for Michigan is about two years. We managed to get done in about 19 months. So okay. we're a little ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah that's actually pretty good. Uh, especially, yeah, like I said, everybody that I've talked to that is in the in the bar distillery business uh breweries they they have those this what they said it's just it's not difficult it, it just eats up a lot of time and it's hurry up and wait and yep. you have to have everything in but then it's like it's they'll take their sweet time responding and getting you all your stuff back so which yep. is basically any governmental agency yep. that uh that you deal with trust me i know my wife works for one um we won't say which one but yeah she works for one so yeah uh i i understand uh, so how uh, how what what made you want to get into? Did you were you a bartender before? Did you like do any mixology or anything? Never, never. No, nope. just no. Nope. I got thrown actually into the bartending side of it when uh, both of my bartenders last July went on vacation at the same time. So <laughs> sink or swim. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. And I've actually I've, I've come I've come to really enjoy being on that side and, and dealing with the yeah. customers face to face yep. rather than just a walk through and yeah you know. Showing people how the distilling stuff works, and and that's the thing too. It's it's nice because, uh, like you said, it gives you that interaction with the, with the customers, and you know, just getting to know people one on one. Like, you know, if I if I hadn't you know came in here, you know, like you said, I, we don't go, we don't get to go out much. But like when I do, it's like I this I I make a point to make this one of my. I remember we came in here when my friend Travis was with me, yeah. and it was funny because he is. Travis is a great kid. He's about what 15 years younger than me. He worked for me. He was my intern and I made him a full-time employee and he's, he's kind of a good old boy. So this was like fancy for him. You know, you could see he was kind of like, he had no idea what to order, but it was just funny. But no, he, he we were in the car. He was, that was so good. I'm like, that's why every time I come here, every time I go out, I try to make a point to stop in here to at least catch and have one, you know, because they're always good <laughs> first of all. And, um, Second, I just, I like, you know, it's a small business and it's local and this is, you know, I, I grew up here, so I enjoy seeing, you know, small businesses flourish and, you know, continue to flourish over the years here. That's, that's the key to it is, you know, maintaining that. And this economy is not easy, but. When no, in, in the resort town, it's not. No. It, it's, uh, there's a lot of seasonal, but we, we do have a lot of uh, uh, locals mm -hmm. that have made this a second home. Yep. And. <clears throat> a lot of the downstate uh, people, they're here every time they're up. They're in for dinner and in for a drink. And, mm, and that's, I can kind of tell friends. when I was yeah. here the other day. And that's, I just kind of sit here and I just like people watching, just listening. Cause I can, you know, oh, okay. So yeah, I, I, I don't recognize, you know, I don't know you. You're not, you're, you're not from here. Okay, cool. So you're, you're out of town and you're checking it out. That's, I like to see that, you know, that's, if I go into a place and I don't recognize anybody, a lot of times for me, that's a good thing anyway. But, <laughs> um, 
No, it's uh, it, it's nice because it means that you know there's there's people that are discovering a you know a local business, which is cool. They're not just going to like you know the the normal the normal places. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's you want everybody to get a piece of the action, but at the same time, you know, I'm not going to lie. My uh, my loyalties go where uh, you know where where I enjoy being the most and. I come in here and it's not, uh, I don't have to scream, which is always nice. I scream anyway, just because I have bad hearing, but, uh, that's, that's another yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> but so, um, what did you do before you got into running your business? Oh, I was in the printing business. Started out with t-shirts with a business up here for a couple of years. And then I worked for a label company in Kalamazoo. Okay. Uh, Quality Assurance Director, COO, I went everything from shift supervisor all the way up to, to running the business. Okay. And then it was just 30 years of that. It was time for a change. Had enough. Yeah. Had enough. Yeah. Try to try to do something that you can uh, you can enjoy a little bit, and yes. that's. But it's funny too because like you you've obviously got a good handle on running the business, but a lot of people that get into they think a quote unquote small business don't realize the workload that comes with it, and the ones that come in and ex they expect to run in the black right off the you know right off the get it doesn't happen. No, it doesn't no, happen. no. I, you know I, I ran a, a small entertainment company for a year and. We didn't make money once. And everyone's like, oh, you got to make decent money. But by the time, you know, by the time I'm said and done, venue insurance, and you pay your talent and everything, um, you know, in, in here it's, you know, supplies, labor, insurance. I mean, overhead is, even in a smaller, a smaller business, overhead is astronomical. Oh, it is. And considering that we were putting money into the business for over a year and a half before mm -hmm. we could even open the doors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a drain. Yep. It does. It gets taxing. I mean, and the, hour, the hours are long, but I, I still enjoy it. And that, that's it right there. That, that last, you still enjoy it. And that's the point is, that's the point of doing anything like this. It's like, you know, my, like this podcast at first I started it out and it was just going to be twice a week or once a week. I was just going to record. And then it turned into, okay, two shows a week now videos. And, you know, now I'm kind of branching out and trying to do things like this. So I'm, I'm trying to like, like I look at it, you're branding yourself and that's exactly right. what you're doing here in this town is you've got your brand and it's, you know, your name, you've got your name. Good. You know, people enjoy it. You know, I've never heard a bad thing about the business, which is a great thing because it's a small town yes. and that's, that's the problem is, you know, having, you know, been to all these little bars down up and down the strip here, this sets apart because it's not really a bar. It's more of like that lounge atmosphere, right. which is nice. And that's what we were looking for. And, and that's it because you're going to, you're going to attract a certain type of crowd. And, and that's, that's your target demographic because those are the ones that are going to spend the money. It's not your, you know, your, your 21 year olds that are going to come in and look for $3 beers or $2 beers. Yep, no beer here. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and, you know, and there, and there's nothing wrong with that. That has every, that, that has a niche in every market, but at the same time for your target demographic, I'd say you're doing it's, extremely well. It, it is. It's, it's, it hits the marks and, and I can usually find a drink for someone. Yeah. yeah. That is a beer or wine drinker. Mm. See, that's where I'm, I'm mostly, um, I'll drink beer, but I don't really enjoy it as much as I do liquor. Um, and it's, it's nice being older now because I don't drink to get, I don't drink to get drunk. I enjoy catching a nice buzz, but I'm not just pounding them back. I mean, like these, I, I could because they're, they're just, they are a tasty drink. and they catch up on you like that. Um, it's like a Long Island. Well, next time you'll have to try one of our raspberry Long Islands. Oh, oh, that's... You, if you like the raspberry, you uh -huh. like the raspberry Long Island. See, raspberry is like my favorite flavor of anything, like vodka and all this. Like any like candy, the like raspberry is like my, I don't know, it just always has been. But yeah, these are these are definitely deadly. What uh, what do you um, you produce? I see all your bottles here now. You make, you do your rum. Uh, gin, gin, vodka. vodka. Uh, and then... If people ask me to try something, I'll try it. I've got a Sambuca. I've done oh, all sorts of flavored ones. Vanilla, coconut, coconut spice. Uh, I'll try I'll try anything. Peanut butter roll. Really? Yeah. That's, it's, now, I'm a peanut butter freak, so that, that might be... You might have to have a little taste yeah, before you go to that. That, that might be... That will definitely be worth a try. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, see, that, that and that... 
how do you how do you go about like just like okay well I'm gonna try you just kind of like mad scientist it and say I'm exactly. just gonna, I'm gonna try this trial, trial and error that's it wow that's, that's it. it's just it is it's it seems it, I mean to me like I said having no knowledge of it it seems like you know like splitting the atom basically but um, kind of speak to the process a little bit like what goes into uh, distilling like any you know whatever type of liquor you you want to use as an example. The biggest difference between your know, rums, gins, vodkas, whiskeys <clears throat> are the base ingredients they use. Mm -hmm. Rums have to be all cane based. A blend of molasses, brown cane sugar, white cane sugar. Whiskeys, uh, ours I use uh, a corn base for that. Sugar beets for both my gin and my vodka. Uh, basically all that stuff goes in a fermentation tank along with water and yeast. It sits for seven days to two weeks depending okay. on what what's being made mm -hmm. and it goes into one of the three stills that we have here okay so yeah. one specifically for rum one for gins and vodkas and one for whiskey okay and we'll get some uh we'll get some pictures of those for the uh for the facebook page and uh we'll post those up with the link to the uh to the audio and the video interviews that'll be on the place to be reviews on uh, on facebook um so what do you do when you are not here? What do you do to kind I'm of always here? You're always here. This, I own a business. I don't have, what the hell is this downtime you yeah, speak yeah, of? No, you're I, acting like I have a life outside of no, this. No. Uh, no, I, I, I'm pretty much pretty much here. I actually did go out on the lake last week. Uh, took a rare half day off and went out with some of our coworkers from here and uh, friends that I've met through here. Mm -hmm. It's been a beautiful day out on the lake. That's that's always nice to get out there and be able to do because you can sit here and you can look at it literally right out the window, and uh, it's all right when it's water. I don't care for it in the winter when I'm staring mm, at a sheet of ice for six. No, I, I'm the yeah. same way too. It's like it was like, oh man, you got to ice fish now. Uh, I really don't do anything outside when it's cold except walk to my truck when I have to go outside. I don't or shovel the driveway. I, well, I don't shovel. I got a snowblower. Let's be honest. You got to have a snowblower up here. It's. Uh, you know, that's, that's shoveling. You get hit with a, a foot of snow overnight, that heavy, wet stuff. You're, you're not shoveling that. If you do, your doctor is going to love you the next day. My chiropractor does because <laughs> I've been stubborn a few times. And I'm like, ah, I'm just going to shovel. Oh, shit. And then, yeah, backs out the next day. But, yeah, that lake is gorgeous. That's my that's my goal. I moved back up here. It's like I'm going to uh, – I got to get another pontoon. I – I worked right across the bay at Harvey's there. That was oh, yeah. open for, you know, 50-some years. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, they <laughs> when they shut down, like I said, I worked there for nine years at the time. And been fortunate enough to buy a pontoon and a free storage there, which was always cool. Jump right on the boat after work. You know, that little there's that little market down the street that was like, was it Dockside Market or whatever? It's an ice cream shop now, up oh, 100. Yeah. Yeah. You used to go in there and get beer at lunch, throw up my cooler out in the shop, and... Uh, Throw it on the boat after work, and it was like, "Yep, we we're ready to go." That was uh, that was that was the way to be, man. And this is uh, this is definitely, like I said, it's a it's a summer it's a summer playground, you know. Winter time, if you're if you're into snowmobiling and uh, stuff like that, it's uh, it's fun too. But uh, it doesn't sound like either of us are big fans of uh, cold weather. No, the older I get, the less I uh, yeah. care about the cold. That, that's I, see, I've never I've never been a fan of cold weather to begin with. Like, I the biggest thing I used to do is I used to go outside and at least play ice hockey, you know. But that's uh, not not anymore. I don't uh, no. I, and you know, I got a kid, so it's like he wants to go outside and play in the snow now. And I'm like, don't stop, uh, man. Yeah, got to. Back inside. Got to. Let's go, man. We'll go out for an hour. Like, no, no, no. It's too cold, man. It's too cold, Daddy. I'm fine. No, no. It's too cold. We're going inside. But uh, no. So we'll get some. Uh, we'll get some pictures up here. And uh, Chris, thank you so much for sitting down with me. For well, uh, I thank you for coming in and taking the time to absolutely. do this. Absolutely, helping uh, us, helping support the community. Hey, you know that's that's I uh, I just moved back here and I kind of want to want to do something like that. You know, if I can help out in any way, you know, a little free, you know, free marketing, free marketing, and uh, we do have a decent reach. So if it uh, if it gets a couple a couple more more butts in the seats, then you know, so be it. It's uh, I want to help out a little bit. So you can uh, you have a Facebook page and a regular website or just Facebook? Yep. We have both. Uh, Copper Facebook, uh, Copper Kettle Distilling. On Facebook and also uh, just CopperKettleDistilling.com on the web. Check out those websites now. Can people order your products online now? Michigan does not allow it. Oh, they don't. They okay, don't I, I wasn't sure. Sales. Okay, but we are in about forty, well, forty-three now. Forty-three different stores throughout okay. the state that are carrying our products. So you can't find the product, and trust and you me, you can find that on our website. All the places that carry it. There you go. So I have been Pete. 
from the place to be reviewed is here with Chris Sada, owner of Copper Kettle Distilling Company. In the place to be reviews, saying, I bid you adieu and cheers. cheers.